I come from Bellingham. Yeah? Yeah. I went to Bellingham High School, moved to Seattle after that for a couple years, and I came back here just worked at a gate shop at Calibrated Pressure Gauges. Uh, Turn out supply to a local vendor. They supply stuff for the refiners. Did that for three years, kind of piqued my interest, and told my boss I wanted to learn more about what I was doing. And he was involved with ISA, so that's how I, you know, he hooked me up with Tony. Came here for two years, and I worked full time while I was doing that. And then it was BP Carson at the time that they recruited me from the school. Put me down there, tested me, and offered me a job. Mm. I've been there for six years. Next week. How long after you graduated did you get the to test down there, at Carson? I tested before I graduated, so probably about the same as some of you guys probably. Coming up on graduation, it was maybe three months, two months before I graduated. But it's a long process. You know, you go and test, and then it might be three months, six months. I mean, I applied before I came to school here mm -hmm. uh, out at Cherry Point a couple times, and it was you know three months in between. You know, say you hear from them, they pass the test. It's another three months before you get an interview, so it can take a while. Not to discourage you, I mean it's. it's just yeah. start applying now. Well, coming up on graduation. Where, uh, when you applied, did you just, did it kind of just hit at the right time, or were you kind of shotgunning resumes out there? I was not shotgunning resumes. I came here with the specific intent to work in, at Trade Point, uh -huh. or, or for BP, a major oil company. And when they offered me the job down there, they were hiring at the time. So I didn't want to move out of Whatcom County, but you know, I don't want to say take very first job you're offered, but Take it makes sense. Job. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you don't have marketable <laughs> skills until you've been there for a while. You know, yeah. then you can compete for those desirable locations. Small sacrifice. I mean, sure. It's Eighty degrees year round in Omaha, so it's <laughs> it's not the worst place I've ever lived. So yeah, if you could run down some of the pros and cons, what's it like being in California? Uh, for me, uh, the only real difference for me, you know, I my girlfriend moved down with me from Bellingham. Um, she loves it, you know, she loves the weather. She was kind of one of those people that the, the gray weather affected her mood. Uh, but, so she was all for it. That helped a lot, having her move on to me. Uh, California for us, we just bought a house last year. It is expensive to buy a house there, but it's not as expensive as you might think. I would say you can get, you know, a nice, you know, a decent, a decent house. I mean. <coughs> 350, but yeah. it's a different world down there. Weather's great. Um, traffic's not as bad as Seattle. Country population. I mean, people just punch it, you know. You can <laughs> ride a motorcycle year round. Um, as far as cost, car insurance doubled for me when I moved there, and my rent went up a little bit. But yeah, I heard two that blocks from the beach, so it's, it's not bad. It's the renting that gets you down there. <coughs> Everything gets anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we paid in three years, probably seventy thousand in rent. Where, you know, that's a down payment on a house. Mm -hmm. So, you just gotta save up your money for that down payment. <laughs> but you can do it. You get a lot of overtime. You know, it's a good place to work. I don't have any complaints. It's, I believe now that they merged, you know, Tesoro bought that place. BP sold it uh, to help pay for the. Uh, Spill they had, <laughs> and uh, so there was another Tesoro right across the street. And now, because of, they call it, you know, it's one plant now. As far as the government is concerned, it's the largest on the west coast. You know, Texas has some really big plants, but this place is huge. What's the biggest thing you've learned on the job that you can ever think of? I would say. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, what you guys are getting is a, it's incredible. You go into these places with guys that have been doing the job for you know, 25, 30 years and don't know how to troubleshoot a loop. You know, and you guys are going to go in and teach them that. And working with people is frustrating sometimes, you know, just like anything. Um, I'd say time. Time is probably the most valuable thing. I wouldn't say I learned time, but you get an education, but you really don't know what you're doing until you get out there and get your hands dirty. Yeah. 
it's a, there's a lot of stuff to learn. I nowhere near feeling uh, like an experienced you know veteran after six years. It's just a huge place, you know. So there's always something new that you see. Do you feel in the job um, position you have now? Do you feel challenged on a daily basis, or is it? I wouldn't say every day. I mean, you have easy days. You know, it's a it's a maintenance department, so we don't fix stuff unless it's broken. Yeah. So some days, you know, and and it's like I say, it's a process. There's a lot of paperwork to get a job going. So if something does break, you know, it has to go through a planning department, and you have to order parts, you know, because you don't want to take that device out of service you have parts or ability to repair it. Um, so everyday challenge, no, but you do get challenged a lot. Um, I just transferred two years ago to the analyzer department. So I've been doing that, it's a whole other field. It's a lot of fun. So the training's a little slow. I've had I think three training classes in two years on analyzers. The rest is just Go figure it out, you know. And they gave me a really good mentor. He was a contractor. The only guy in our department in the entire instrument shop is a contractor. He's my mentor, and he's, he's great. Mm -hmm. So the analyzers are analyzing mainly for EPA stuff, right? Exactly, yeah. EPA. It's called different things, but yeah, EPA. Emissions. Can you see yourself uh, retiring at this place? I would say if I retired, I'd move somewhere after retirement. It's a, it'd be a great, like, you know, Southern California, there's all kinds of opportunity to make money in what you do, you know, or what you're going to be doing. What else do you have your eyes on besides uh, oil and gas? Nothing right now. I'm not trying to get out of it. I still have a lot to learn there. Uh, but there are a lot of pharmaceutical companies down there, a lot of analyzer companies down there. I mean, everywhere. They're, Texas is huge. I went there for a training class, it was about a month ago, and the guys were telling me, yeah, just walk down the street and anything with the lights on, you can get a job. <laughs> the only problem is you have to live in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't plan on leaving the company. I mean, they've been good to me. You know, that plant, the people, you know, the name on the front changed, but it's the same people. You know, my boss is the same boss I had with BP. It's, it's a good place. And half our shop, roughly, is from here. You know, so you, you go there, it's not as big of a shock, and you, you know, you almost instantly have connections with people. You probably recognize some, you know, somebody when you get down there, maybe from, you know, a previous graduating class, or maybe a friend's friend, and then you, know, you have, you know, drinking buddies or whatever. It's just like that. So when there's like a, when there's a company merge like that, or being bought out, does that change your package that you have with them, though, as far as do you take on Tesoro's yes. retirement package? Yep. They don't? Okay. Yeah, the, so different companies get different deals based on their size, right? So BP being you know, third or fourth largest company in the world had a lot bigger discount. So, it, you know, take, for instance, our valves. Uh, you know, a normal valve position would be 1500 bucks with BP. Now we're paying 2500 because we don't get that big discount with BP. Same thing goes with your health insurance. Um, the only thing that I really noticed different was the profit share drop 1%. Like where they match your 401k contributions, BP was 7%, to sort of 6%, everything else across the board really didn't change. So up to, I wanna say it's up to 15,000 they'll match 6%. adds up quick. I say when you do start a job, if the company has a 401k, whatever they match, put, at least put that part in. Because it's 100% return on your It's investment. free money. Yeah, it's, it's free. free. Yeah, exactly. You'd be foolish not to. At least put that in. And especially if you're starting a job from no income or low income, right. if you start the contributions right away, you won't miss it. If you start you know, taking home all your pay and then later on decide to start putting some away, you'll, you'll say, oh, I'm making less now. You'll feel it. If you make that decision right away on day one going in, you'll never miss it, and you'll uh, have a much easier time saving. Then you get your annual increase. Add that to your 401k as well, and you 
just sort of my system <laughs> you're maxed out on your 401k contribution. <laughs> Question. Are you, uh, in six years, are you maxed out then as far as your pay? pay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you're I was maxed out at two years. Oh, that was top rate, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there fed levels of pay grade, or how is that? There like? are. Yeah. It's, the way they do it is not, I don't want to say it's a time base. You know, you've been here for one year, you're level one, or you're level two. It's, you have a, a huge list of all these training classes. I mean, you're going to spend your first two years, if you end up in a place like this, in training. You know, you'll still get some experience, right? You know, field time, but you'll get, go through a lot of training classes. You have to. There's a lot of things going on out there. You'll have safety, you'll have CPR, you'll have forklift, you know, how to drive a man lift, aerial man lift. Everybody have individual certs for that? I'm sorry? Everybody has to go through the individual classes for that? Well, if they do it as a group. Okay. You know, they hire in, say, 10 people, 20 people. They'll hire instrument, machinists, uh, operations, all, all together, and they call it a four class, fundamentals of refining, and they put you in these classes together. They don't do it like just you, they bring in a trainer, you know, they wait till they, you know, they do a big hiring and then they put everybody in the class. You go through the classes together. You get a lot of training, a lot of training. So once you finish like this list in your next tech level or something? Yep. Then you, go through you met this and someone will have to sign off saying that they saw you do it. Like say calibrate a 3051, you know, pressure transmitter. Then I see you do it and I see you did it right then I can sign off because I'm level six, or a supervisor can sign off too. And once you complete your allotted training, then you get your pay, your pay increase in a different title. The different departments, you don't get any increase, like uh, we have a TDC group, which is our DCS system, kind of like your Delta V, and uh, analyzer group doesn't pay anymore, but you do get more opportunities to, you know, for training, as well as I'm still a rookie, don't get me wrong, but a lot of this stuff is, you can apply to analyzers the same as you do with instrumentation, it's just a smaller scale. Little pumps, little pressure sensors, little, you know, everything. Anybody else? Is Tony treating you okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have a huge head start, man. It's a great program. I'm, I'm thankful, you know, every day. I wouldn't got the job. Like I said, I applied, probably, I think, three times out of Cherry Point for different positions. And, you know, I'd always make it to the interview, and I think they saw me and fell on my face or something. I, I'm not sure, but, <laughs> you know, the, it, going through this, I, I mean, it was, it's the easiest entrance exam I ever took. Because you'll never be better prepared. All right, thanks, Ryan. If you guys want, if you have any questions, or if you're going to end up being recruited down there, I'll leave my number with Tony. So if you want questions on places that you want to avoid to live, or recommendations on different neighborhoods, because Southern California is very, you know, you could be on one side of the street, and it's a nice neighborhood, and literally across the street, it's a different town. You know, it's a different feel. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, guys.